And then friend him up like extermination Operation locked down but how many people no see Soldier man and police man them a flood the streets World a suffer then Because of famine in the land just for the bread of life But nothing no really over time it's tell them get it right Still them don't give a damn Sing praises to I am that I am Hey yo Life has been over It's time to change It's time to change Stay tuned for our featured presentation. Another edition of Beyond the Surface. This is Dawi Ben Yisra. And once again, we're glad that you could tune in. We're coming to you live from the Cultural Center of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel. And we appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully you've had a chance to do some research after our last program. And we're going to take you on yet another journey. And hopefully you're prepared because this is the big one. Um, we're going to discuss Easter. And we know many of you have, um, have your plans all set. Uh, your family get-togethers are all planned. But we're going to try and give you an understanding of where the Easter celebration comes from, uh, you'd be surprised to find out that it really isn't based in the Bible at, at all, not the way that you believe it is. And um, we, we're going to try and unearth some things for you and, and hopefully you've got your pen, you got your paper, you got your Bible and maybe a history book and um, you know, get ready because this is going to be quite a ride, I hope. Uh, we've got uh, on the panel with me, I've got my esteemed panelists, Sister 
Johanna Bat Yisrael. Shalom. Shalom, how are you? Fine. Okay, and my brother, Yermiyahu Ben Yisrael. Shalom. Late edition, but welcome. Um, you know, I, I kind of gave them that teaser to let them know that um, this this thing that is called Easter is really not based in what they think it is. You know, the, the Bible is where most of the days are set, you know, that the, the year has begun. People are starting to get the spring fever where they, they see things are starting to rejuvenate the, the trees, the birds, everything is starting to come to life. and. They've, they've got this celebration that they are used to keeping and they really believe that this is a celebration that is based in as, as basically it's the most important Christian day of the year um, because this is when in their be belief this is when um, the Messiah the Messiah yeah I don't I don't want to call him with it in the wrong name yeah. um, makes a, a, a miraculous um, rebirth mm -hmm. yeah. now that happens and that do we do have scriptural uh, evidence of that in the Bible but then there's this thing Easter and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit very briefly because you know people base their belief system they, they believe themselves to be Christians and they base that off the Bible mm -hmm. but the Bible talks about holy days mm -hmm. but it doesn't talk about holidays as a matter of fact um, the word Easter is only mentioned one time in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you've got a constant mentioning of these holy days that the children of Israel kept. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about, um, you know, the beginnings of where, you know, Easter came from, this where these pagan rituals came from, and then start understanding why people do what they do. So, so let's get you going with, um, with first and foremost, where did these, you know, why, why do people do keep the traditions of men you know it's interesting you know what we have is people tend to not like change mm -hmm. that's one thing so we get into routines and you know after the council of Nicaea and I think it was a 325 mm -hmm. they had a routine for these pagans and these Christians that were newly formed at that particular time Right. And even back in the day, we know that Israel was used to a routine. In fact, the God of Israel set us up in a routine so that we'd have a way to kind of be able to measure our lives, go about mm -hmm. how, to, how to conduct ourselves. It gives a sense of order. Right. Uh, what happens is if you get the wrong information and you get into a, uh, into a routine around that, then starts coming mm -hmm. in all this wickedness and heresy. And actually, I'm going to read a little bit out of uh, Matthew chapter 15. We're going to base this so that you see scripturally, this is how the ancient people of Israel sure. okay. actually got off into mm -hmm. some of the uh, traditions of men. Um, this is uh, Matthew chapter 15, and we're just going to read verses 1 through 6 here. Uh, let me go ahead and grab that mm -hmm. and give the uh, audience some time. But um, Matthew 15, you said, right? Matthew chapter 15. Okay. This nice book here. And you see my page is a little crinkly, and that's the way all our books should be because that's the, the reason is, is that we're supposed to read this book to show mm -hmm. ourselves approved. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. read every novel. We got people out there buying Kindles. They'll read the they, whole thing. They'll, they'll get a Mac cover iPad. Cover. They'll read right. the newspaper. They'll read Jet. They'll read uh, E-Magazine and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Cover to cover every advertisement, every joke, every tittle. You know, you'll, you'll find people, I'm sorry for interrupting you, mm -hmm. but you know, you'll find people that have um, the dream books. Right. And, you know, the way that you said that, you know, your book, our books are worn and, and you've been well read mm -hmm. and that's how they should be. That's how oftentimes dream books are done. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And these dream books are truly nothing but astronomical. Astrology, right. and in addition to all other types of orients of, uh, of witchcraft and such, right. that we're, we were told in the scriptures mm -hmm. not to deal with. Not mm -hmm. to but deal no with. religion. None. Right. Right. None. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. you get tarot cards, something, I mean, that book mm -hmm. is tattered. Mm -hmm. right. But this book, you go into a lot of Christian houses, it is pristine. Yeah. They won't even let dust, they shine it like furniture. Mm -hmm. Let's get to it. Okay, mm -hmm. so in Matthew chapter 15, uh, verse 1, then came Yahshua. Uh, then came to Yeshua scribes mm -hmm. and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Mm -hmm. Here's the tradition. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Mm -hmm. When he answered and said unto them, this is Yahshua now answering them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of Elohim? This mm -hmm. is Yahweh Elohim. Mm -hmm. By your tradition. 
For Elohim commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother. And he that curses father or mother, let him die to death. But you say, whoever shall say to his father or mother, It is a gift mm -hmm. by whatsoever you mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. So now you're just vacating the very law that Yahweh has set up. Mm -hmm. Okay. This, uh, Thus have you made the commandment of Elohim of non-effect by your tradition. You hypocrites, hmm. well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draws near unto me with their mouth mm -hmm. and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Right. Mm -hmm. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're the commandments of men as opposed to the commandments of Yah. Right. The, right. the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. And and also the culture of Yah, which mm -hmm. is which is steeped in the the not traditions, but the twelve, the, the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. the Holy Days, mm -hmm. all of the things that were supposed to be passed on by the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, so that the rest of the world would know what to do and how to do these things, so that they would be in alignment with nature and with the Most High. Um, Sister Johanna, um, the, where, where did all this stuff come from? I mean, because the Bible is one of the earliest collection of books, but interestingly enough, when Yahshua was around, there was no New Testament. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they obviously weren't basing anything off of the New Testament writings. Everything had to have been based off of something before that. But a lot of the things that people do to that, that are related to Easter predate Yahshua himself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know that's exactly the question to ask when you think about where did the where did these traditions come through come mm -hmm. from? Um, when you go through the scriptures, and you know, especially I, I implore people to oftentimes uh, get a search engine, you utilize search engines right. throughout the scriptures to get a better understanding of certain things. Mm -hmm. If you do such things as that, if you do searches on things like um, the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. looking up Israel, that's one of the most utilized terms, um, uh, actually proper names throughout. Yes. Th mm -hmm. throughout the scriptures I mean right. throughout the scriptures and the epistles mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. those types of things another one that would be a good thing for them to look up is the word gods with an S plural mm -hmm. and that connects you with what your question is why do people do these things right that's right. because they desire to follow the gods with an S small G small G small G, small right. G <laughs> right okay with an mm -hmm. S um, they desire to follow these gods of the nations mm -hmm. and these gods are many mm -hmm. you know and our people got a um, you know a small sampling of these gods when we spend our time in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Egyptians worship so many things. They worship cats, dogs, frogs, I mean, you know, a litany of fish. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing is that today, most all these things are still being worshipped today mm. as these little G gods. Okay. So the reason that Easter is what it is today is because of the desire to worship other gods. Mm -hmm. When you go back to the scriptures, you'll find that this this god of Easter mm -hmm. has been named so many things throughout the throughout the centuries. She's made, re, most recently is Eostra. Mm -hmm. But as a matter of fact, I'd like to read you a few names that she's been called throughout. The okay, years. All right. because she is a she mm -hmm. in this particular case. And this is from a document from the Cultural Center. This is a document from the Cultural Center. This particular one is called. It's entitled "Beyond the Surface," and mm -hmm. it's the question is where did Easter come from? Great. Okay. Uh, and the goddess Easter, she's been named Astroth, mm -hmm. Astroth by the Zidonians, Astar by the Phoenicians, Ishtar by the Babylonians, Venus by okay. the Romans. Now, now you're naming peoples that, you know, they're, they're not around anymore until you start getting to... Mm -hmm. The Romans. Now, right. those are like Italians, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Well, I mean, you can you can connect these Romans to the Vatican. Right. Right. And I mean, they're that, still around today. So absolutely. The Pope, they might the Pope not know still who there, the Zidonians right? are, but they definitely absolutely. know who the yeah. Romans are. Absolutely. Okay. Because none of these this hasn't changed. This is this is the same goddess that's been worshipped. Mm -hmm. um, so, as I said, Ishtar by the Babylonians, Venus by the um, Romans. And you mm -hmm. can connect Venus because oftentimes that that hold uh, you. There's a lot of uh, commercials mm -hmm. and products that are called Venus. Yeah, they got that a planet named that. Minute absolutely, from Mars, yeah, from Venus. absolutely. Right. So these things are still amongst us. Mm. Um, Aphrodite by the Greeks, and surely growing up in some of these public schools, uh, some of our audience are, are familiar with Aphrodite. That's the goddess of love and such. You know, fertility, because mm. fertility okay. is one of the main um, uh, byproducts of a lot of these goddesses. Mm -hmm. Another would be Eostra, like I spoke, by the Germans. Mm -hmm. That's coming closer up to today. Mm -hmm. Athena by the Athenian, the Athenians. 
uh, Isis by the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Everybody's familiar with that Isis, mm -hmm. you know, with because um, oftentimes we connect ourselves um, with them. Um, I remember that wrongly. cartoon when, uh, that uh, television show when I was young. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, right. okay. exactly. Right. exactly. Right. And um, Diana by the Ephesians, and finally Eastern by mm -hmm. the um, Americans, Western Europeans, and, and generally uh, throughout the, the world, present day. Right. Um, but this particular, this goddess Easter, um, was connected, uh, and I think we spoke on with being um, Diana with the Ephesians, mm -hmm. and um, and you find that in the scripture, actually in the epistles, okay. um, whereby um, people were at that time truly, they recognized the fact that they were true worshipers of this goddess Diana. Okay, so... You read something out of the New Testament, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now you're getting ready to read something out of the New Testament. It almost seems like the New Testament is there to let you know what people was off into. Right, and most of the Christians, they, they reference the New Testament, so it's right there as a testament against them mm -hmm. right. to let them know. But it's not scripture. That it's not scripturally based. Mm -hmm. It's not scripture per se, because the scriptures of the Old Testament right. is the stuff that's written in the New Testament yeah. is letting you know what people was getting off into. Yeah, mm -hmm. the New Testament is a confirmation of what was already written. Okay. You know, actually, I'd like to speak on, you, you kind of opened up with, um, the um, the the holiday mm -hmm. Easter mm -hmm. appears one time, yeah. and um, and that is true. And what happens? People have to really understand and uh, and connect with how that is. Okay. Um, let me see. If we pick it's it up. In, uh, we're yeah, going to go to Acts, Acts. Mm -hmm. chapter twelve, mm -hmm. and I start at verse one, and I'll go down from there. Right. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, mm -hmm. and he killed James the brother of John with the sword, and because because he saw it, it pleased the Jews. Because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to further take Peter also. Mm -hmm. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Right. Correct? Well, those are the apostles that mm -hmm. you're speaking of mm -hmm. that were killed, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Verse four states, and when he had apprehended him, he put him into prison and delivered him to the four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Mm -hmm. Now, in this particular case, you just read in the from the verse before that preceding it. It was speaking about these days of love, love and bread. Right. Okay. Well, now that's part of the, the the holy days. Yes, it is. Okay. Absolutely. Those not are the holy holidays. Days, not the holidays. Easter being a holiday. Right. And that's just a connection because um, when you go further on in Acts, like I was speaking of, mm -hmm. the people were still at that point. You know, the people were later on at that point worshiping Diana at that point. But in here, this really, as a matter of fact, in my, in my book, mm -hmm. you have a, I have a small G here that connects, and it says Passover. Mm -hmm. So Amen. this is true. So, this is truly what they were speaking of. Not Easter per se, what we know today, but truly Passover. But they were telling a story from the vantage point of Herod, because it was basically saying Herod did this to James mm -hmm. and then to Peter, and then Herod was going to keep Easter. Right. So it wasn't that, I mean, they were actually keeping Easter at that time, the pagans. Right, just right, like Because the, what people tend to, to miss is that at that time, the Romans were occupying mm -hmm. right. Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and they had the people of Jerusalem under siege. Right. And so one of the things that they did is they controlled their commerce, they controlled what they, you know, what foods they had access to, they controlled everything, and they controlled what they could, what they could uh, celebrate. Right. So they were trying to snuff out the culture of the Hebrews at that time. Right. You know, and so, you know, you, you look at the, um, the mention of the unleavened bread, so that lets you know that the Hebrews still knew what was going on, but then it, in, the, in the same time it mentions the Easter mm -hmm. to let you know what was also going on at that time. Mm -hmm. So the conflict of cultures right. there. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. We also know in Acts, when they started talking about that the, that the apostles were first called, what, Christians in Antioch? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it also references Diana, and then we just read about Diana of the Ephesians mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. So it starts to tell you, again, it's yet another clue letting you know that there was paganism that was already, that they were already trying to marry to what Judaism that we were actually following. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all of these pagan deities, all of these, you know, gods with a little g, were brought in with all of the different um, occupying nations that came in, because we, we know from our studies, and, and hopefully you've been, you know, doing some studies at home as well, that first you had the Babylonian Empire, um, then you had the Media Persian Empire, which is like the Russians. Um, then you had the the Greek Empire, and then the Roman Empire. So this was the last empire, and we were just reading in Acts uh, with the, the things that took place after Yeshua had already been crucified. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're we're showing you that from the point of of his walking the earth and on, they had already been well into keeping these pagan 
religions and, and, and uh, worshiping these pagan deities. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything else that you wanted to, to bring out in, as, as far as those deities are concerned? Uh, no, pretty much that was it. The, the fact that um, there were so many ones being um, being worshipped that time. I definitely, you know, as we move on, like to really get into the fact that um, when people deal with Easter um, and they deal with the, the sun um, the sun being risen, mm -hmm. they believe that that's the time frame in which he mm -hmm. was rose from the dead. And that's truly, according to scripture, called Feast of First Fruits. But it's all confused um, when dealt with from a, um, you know, a standard point of view, that being generally Christian. Okay. Um, I could read something according to that. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Jump right in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll, I'll read here. And this is kind of gets into the Council of Nicaea and how they started reckoning that with that uh, with this pagan hol hol holiday mm -hmm. and this um, sun worship. It says that Easter was a very popular feast. And, and one of the things that they liked. It, it and still reason, is. It's, it's a very popular feast right. because it was ornate. Mm -hmm. And we got to understand something, too. These rituals had a lot to do with sex. Let's we're, make sure that when we say fertility, on that, right. we're talking about sex. Mm -hmm. And we know that that used to be a taboo thing to say back in the 50s, 60s. Today is rampant. And it's, it's sex can be very pleasurable. Mm -hmm. And that is another thing that lured the people into it. People like to attribute things that are they're very pleasurable. If you look at Easter mm -hmm. and all the symbolism and everything, it's very pleasurable. The, the, the eggs are ornate. It's a very pleasant day. Mm -hmm. You dress mm -hmm. up to the nines. And um, when they, they looked at this, instead of trying to get... When they were, when the Romans were trying to marry this whole thing, when Constantine decided he was going to convert to Catholicism mm -hmm. and uh, or Christianity, as as he was thinking of it, um, he they were looking for a way to get the pagans and all this, all these other deities that they were worshiping, these little gods, little g mm -hmm. that they were dealing with. So what they did was they said, you know what? Let us um, simply substitute the pagan holiday of Easter for the correct celebration of the resurrection of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And they determined this at the Council of Nicaea in 325 uh, BCE, before the Common Era. Mm -hmm. And they looked at this to occur on the first Sunday following the full moon after the vernal equinox because Easter was directly associated with the birth of spring and not necessarily with the resurrection of the Messiah right. because the pagans were dealing with fertility deities as, as my sister had mentioned. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about that yeah. because I mean, that, you know, we might lose when we start talking about vernal equinox and all that because they're not, they're not necessarily familiar with these things and it's something that they should research. But what they do know mm -hmm. is that they like to go looking for eggs. Right? Mm -hmm. Brightly colored painted eggs. Mm -hmm. Now, is that something that was related to the Messiah at all? No. I mean, where did that, where did that yeah. come from? Well, I mean, what is, what does an egg hmm. represent? Oh, it, re it represents rebirth. It represents rebirth. Or, or As, birth. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Because absolutely. chicks lay eggs and, you know, women have eggs. Let me read this for you. Uh, <laughs> eggs represent new life that returns to the nature in springtime. Mm -hmm. The custom of exchanging eggs began in ancient Egyptian times mm. when Egyptians and Persians dyed eggs in spring colors and gave them to friends as gifts. The Persians believed the earth hatched from a giant egg. And new clothes came into the picture as another symbol of new life. Mm. Not new life in the Messiah, but rebirth or new life of the sun. So this was back in the Egyptian time. Absolutely. Now the Egyptian, way prior to the way Messiah, prior to the Messiah mm -hmm. walking the earth. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay, so we know that eggs predated him. Mm -hmm. Where did this rabbit come from? I mean, you know, the Easter bunny. I mean, uh, you know, chocolate. I mean, that's that the, the caviar. There can't be anything wrong with that, right? I mean, that, that connects you back yeah. again, like my brother was stating, to your fertility. Right. Um, we know that rabbits are generally connected to fertility. They're very fertile, mm. and um, and basically. They, you know, we know that rabbits don't lay eggs, right, right, right. <laughs> but you know they they kind of you know try to confuse us there a little bit with that eggs and the rabbit. I'm old enough to remember when they used to say that if a woman was pregnant, she failed her rabbit test. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> okay, how do y'all that one? Y'all don't remember that? Nah. Uh, all right, well, y'all go do some research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what, hey, that's what they used wow. to say. Wow. Hey. But um. But then, now, where is the kids looking for the eggs? What is that all about? Mm -hmm. I mean, because 
you're saying fertility, but they're kids. You know, what do kids have to do with fertility? They're not they're not able to reproduce when they're four, five, six years old. Without being graphic, I guess what we have to, to kind of look into if there's an egg that's being searched out and there's a lot of little people or little things trying to get to that egg. What right. what does this represent? It's kind of like the sperm and the egg kind of situation, oh, isn't it? Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. So they got, they got the, the kids all dressed have, up. Have and the kids dressed up as little sperm. So, so in essence, they're basically you know, kinda, yeah, they're, they're basically ooh. doing some sort of a pagan ritual yeah. and offering their children up. Yes, right? yes. To this pagan deities. Just like the scriptures, Mosai wow. tells us not to offer up your children, not to not to cast them into the fire of Molech and so forth and so on. And truly, doing these types of things are directly connected to these things. Okay. Directly connected. All right, now, now, I, you know, I don't know where y'all. You know, I mean, you know, that I'm sure. I don't know where y'all are taking. <laughs> these people too but I'm going to have to save something and, and I want you to, to hopefully deal a little bit with the cross I mean the cross you oh. see it up on the hill yeah and surely yeah. that has everything to do with oh. Easter right well no <laughs> <laughs> I mean if they have to look at the very origin of the cross the cross right. came in many flavors back then mm -hmm. um, you have the onk Mm -hmm. Okay, the mm -hmm. Egyptians had it. It had more like a, a handle mm -hmm. for you. And then that was formed into um, kind of like a towel, which looks like the letter T, mm -hmm. which is the origin of the letter T. Right. Then um, Constantine, here we go back to Constantine and, and the Council of Nicaea. Mm -hmm. he, he claimed that he saw a cross in the sky at this time. And it was a sign, and, and as he was given this word, for him to conquer. So this became the symbol for Easter, but it was later given this kind of P. And you know, a lot of pastors wear that robe or they wear that uh, yeah. that scroll, and it's got that P with the cross. And I all always of that. wondered about that. Yeah, and they got a they got a wheel, uh -huh. and it you know kind of looks like an X. Well, there's two letters. They call them Chi Ro, and that that P and that that kind of X. Kind right, of cross. Right. Mm -hmm. There's some relationship with that, and I implore you go out there and just look up Wikipedia. Look for Chi Ro. Look for the cross. Look for the P and the X, mm -hmm. and do your own research. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it, it, it's kind of deep where the origins of that came from. But we know the Romans, they took 6,000 Jews, uh -huh. lined them up on one of their major roads, uh -huh. and slaughtered them all. So from the, 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 the children of Judah mm -hmm. and uh, the Levites and the Benjamites who were all in the land at that time, they were it was constantly being slain. It was constantly being slain. On what they call the cross or the torture stake. Mm -hmm. and, and the torture stake is the key. Mm -hmm. A torture stake is nothing more than just a pole. Mm -hmm. All right. And to really be a torture, they wouldn't hang you out like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you, well, you can kind of manage that. But when they hang you and they, they put a nail through your wrist, mm -hmm. and then they put a nail through your, they cross your feet over and put a nail through both the ankles. Mm -hmm. That And they, they, there's no antiseptic. I mean, that is excruciating mm -hmm. pain. Mm -hmm. Right. That enough would cause you to But that was just capital punishment of the day. I mean, that's right. what they did mm -hmm. to the people that they considered to be um, uh, criminals of the state, so to speak. Right. So it's kind of like today where you see people getting lethal injection. Mm -hmm. It's just supposedly lethal injection is more humane as opposed to what they did mm -hmm. back, or hanging. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And which some states still hang. Still hang. Still some still do electrocution. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's that's really amazing. You know, when you when you speak, when you connect those, because we're taught that he was crucified on a cross. Right. And that's not true. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, it was a torture stake. It was a pole. When you read throughout the um, throughout the book, right. you'll see oftentimes it says that he was on the tree. Right. Mm -hmm. He was on the tree. He was which, on the torture stake, right. mm -hmm. which was a sin. Which back to, going back to law, it was a sin for him to be to remain on that tree um, into the even. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, let me, let me read that really quick here. Mm -hmm. And this is in uh, Saint John and uh, chapter nineteen. Okay. And I'll pick it up here. Verse 31, and it states, The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon, they say, the cross. Mm -hmm. If you do your research back, just like you have the Lord in here mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, that truly was, uh, was, was changed. It was previously Yahweh, his name. Mm -hmm. And when you hear, see here, upon the cross, that will be on the torture state, mm -hmm. on the Sabbath day. Let me go back so you can get a connection. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the stake, torture stake on the Sabbath day for that Sabbath day was an high day mm -hmm. be um, besought Pilate and that their legs might be broken that they might be taken away now this connects us back to um 
to what you were saying. In being on this torture stake, uh, what would happen is the, um, the, the people that were on this torture stake would use their legs as support because it's natural, just like trying to breathe, even, trying you know, to brace yourself. You know, trying to brace yourself. So mm -hmm. what they would do such that they would not stay on a torture stake living for days upon days upon days, they would come through and they would break their legs such as they would not have any, any, any support and mm -hmm. then they would die. And now, according to scripture, however, when you go back to the Old Testament, that the Messiah, this unblemished lamb, which was what he was, he would not have a broken limb. Mm -hmm. So even though it was customary for them to break the limbs mm -hmm. and they were coming to him to do that, right. they did not do that. He had already expired mm -hmm. according to, um, to the law so that yeah. that wouldn't take place. Okay. I'll pick that up in verse 32. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first, the first man, mm -hmm. and of the other, which was crucified with him. Verse 33. But when they came to Yeshua and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. Mm -hmm. um, and so it went on through there. Um, and I want to pick this up. Now, let's pick it up in verse 36. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. You know, and connecting that back with... Um, you know how we're speaking about uh, as far as the crowd, this torture stake, as well as um, as that following day, where we talk about the um, the, the the sun is risen. All right. Good. You know, good. I, I wanted to talk about okay. that. Okay. You know, um, you'll find so many times, particularly here, that uh, people will go on to uh, Stone Mountain Park, mm -hmm. onto the top. They'll, they'll they'll hike to the top of the mountain in order to actually have a, a, a sunrise, sunrise, sunrise service. service. Right. Exactly. They get there before dawn. Mm -hmm. And then they wait for the sun to rise. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to what the epistle said about. But, but when the S-U-N rises, right. then they say the sun, sun. is risen. Right. But, right. but the rising of the S-O-N oh. happened 2000 some odd years ago. Right. So what, what sun are they talking about? Exactly. Is risen. Yes. Right. yes. Not was risen. Was risen. Is risen. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's subtle, yeah. but yet and still, there throughout the entire country, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. throughout the entire world, everybody's celebrating mm -hmm. at the same time, this uh, this uh, same day, mm -hmm. the rising of the S U N. Mm -hmm. But in, in some of the other shows, we've even talked about how this sun is this representative of Satan mm -hmm. right, is actually, you know, depicted and behind. The Messiah, you see a sun halo behind mm -hmm. him, the halo itself, mm -hmm. and, the, and angels, and all these other things, and, and you have this constant showing of an S U N mm -hmm. when we are supposed to be, in theory, mm -hmm. worshiping an S O N. Mm -hmm. When Lucifer is also known in Scripture as the Son of the Morning, right? Mm -hmm. The Absolutely. Morning Star, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tri Star Pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that. Mm -hmm. We even have a, a, a whole channel dedicated. So, in essence, when they're up there on Stone Mountain and they say the S-U-N is risen, they're not talking about the Mashiach at all. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. All right. And there's nothing in here about doing such a ritual. No. No. Nothing no. about nothing. keeping no. such a Absolutely. No. Nothing about having a nothing cross righteous. to represent. <laughs> there's nothing in here about keeping these things. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. so we've, we've broken down mm -hmm. all of these pagan elements. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the eggs. We've talked about the, the rabbit. We talked about the fertility elements. We've talked about the sun and the and the and the um, cross and all of these things that make up what is the high holy day mm -hmm. of the Christian religion. Right. Mm -hmm. Now Christianity is supposed to be based in the Bible. Right. Right. So what were the people in the Bible doing? They weren't doing any of this stuff. Right. Nope. Well, you know what? Let me pick this up. And um, and this is, again, John and uh, chapter 20. And this okay. directly connects to, like you said, what's going on on, um, on this Easter Sunday morning. Mm. Uh, and let's see what happened. Okay. Actually, verse 1. Uh, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre and see it the stone the stone taken away from see the stone taken away from the sepulchre then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Yeshua loved and said to them they have taken away but the point of the matter is it was very early before the it was still yet, yet dark mm -hmm. and the Messiah was already risen 
He okay. was already risen. So for I them, I hope y'all caught that because I almost missed it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. go ahead. Break yeah. it down. Break so, it down. Let me let me go back again. Let me read it again. Verse one, chapter twenty, verse one of Saint John. Mm -hmm. The first day of the week. This is your Easter Sunday that we're we're told about. Right. The first day of the week comes. Uh, Mary Magdalene. Very. She comes early when it was yet dark. The mm -hmm. sun has not risen. He mm -hmm. was already. He was risen. Not right. it, but he was risen unto the, sepul the sepulcher. And she sees the sun already taken away from the sepulcher. And she okay. says he's already gone. He's already. He, the Messiah, is already risen. The sun has not risen yet. Right. But he's the S U N, but the S O N. Okay. Has. Just, just, just one quick point. Go ahead. Go ahead. You were just saying. In that first verse, chapter 20, the first day of the week. That's mm -hmm. where I was going. Mm -hmm. you, you, you went right to where I the wanted to go. Because, yes. because yes. This yes. Is, this is, this is the first day of the week. Because this is this is a, a big area of confusion. Mm -hmm. Because I've had conversations with people who mm -hmm. say that Sunday is the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Sabbath day and the seventh mm -hmm. day. Right. Now, I tell them over and over again, it can't be because Saturday is mm -hmm. the Sabbath mm -hmm. day. Right. Now, here, you, like you said, it's the, it says the first day of the week, mm -hmm. and they claim that this is Easter Sunday. Sunday right. So it's it's after midnight. Right. It's on the first day of the week. Right. And if anybody's got a calendar, hopefully you can go and figure out the first day of the week. It says Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. Wednesday. Th Sunday is the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. It can't be the first day and yeah, the seventh day. You have sunrise on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So that is the, the beginning first day of the week. In the Gregorian calendar, right, you got that Sunday is the first day of the week. Now, when this says the first day of the week, this kind of refers back to the way that the Hebrews kept their mm -hmm. calendar, mm -hmm. because otherwise it would have just said on Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> it, right. it would have been so much easier because that's what the Romans right. did back then. Right, mm -hmm. but it didn't say that. It said on the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. um, now we kind of. We kind of bypass the most important thing of, of, of what we want them to take from this, and that is what was going on at Easter time. I mean, it wasn't Easter. Right. Mm -hmm. There was no Easter egg hunt. There was no Easter going on at that time. So let's let's really because this is this is what we want them to take from this. There was something going on at them times right. specifically, and um, you know we we're going to touch on some things. And we need for them to realize that, that the Hebrews were gathered at that time keeping Hebrew holy, holy days. days. Mm -hmm. So what, um, first of all, uh, let's, let's go ahead and very quickly go um, to Leviticus 23 yeah. because I, I just want to. I was just about to go ahead and okay. ask you. Yeah, right, if we can go there to lay that foundation, okay? Um, so we can lay that down mm -hmm. for them so that they can actually see what we were keeping as we were commanded to keep now remember Yahweh said in here several different times mm -hmm. you are to keep these commandments throughout all your generations mm -hmm. throughout all your dwellings that's right okay mm -hmm. so wherever we are no matter what time this is not old time stuff this is today mm -hmm. we are to keep these laws mm -hmm. so let's start in uh, chapter 23 verse 1 and Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, When they were coming out of Egypt. As they were coming out of Egypt. Okay. All right. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feast of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. These are Yahweh's feasts. Right. Okay. Which you shall proclaim to be a holy convocation. A holy convocation is a congregation of the saints. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which means you, you congregate, mm -hmm. uh, much like in church. Even these are my feasts. Verse three: Six days shall you shall work be done, mm -hmm. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh in all your dwellings. So, so that's what we call Saturday, right? And as we mentioned earlier, there it says the seventh day, the seventh day, not the first day, mm -hmm. the seventh day, the seventh day is the Sabbath. It's the Sabbath. Okay. And the first six days, you got you can do all your so work. We didn't make this up. Mm. There it is right there. No. Okay. Well, if that was the case, then why does Chick-fil-A and these other ones in the stores shut you off on so-called first day? Yeah, they used to. They they, yeah, they're one of the yeah. few that still you know. do that. But, um, but yeah, that, that is their keeping of their day. Of their but day. These day. are Yahweh's days. Of mm -hmm. Yahweh's days. Okay. All right. Verse four. Mm -hmm. These are the feast of Yahweh, mm -hmm. even holy convocations which you shall proclaim in their seasons mm -hmm. in the 14th day of the first month. Mm -hmm. Now the first month of our year, we know is the beginning of the year mm -hmm. and that's spring. Mm -hmm. Okay, which makes sense. 
on the first 14th day of the first month it, at even is Yahweh's Passover. Right. Now we know that Passover was that day that the death angel passed over our people. Mm -hmm. Yahweh mm -hmm. gave Moshe and the children of Israel a a decree that mm -hmm. if they wanted the death angel to pass over, that death angel was going to hit all the firstborn. Mm -hmm. They had to paint the post with the blood of a killed lamb, and then mm -hmm. they had to eat all of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have an holy convocation. Okay. So there's some parallelism of what was going on at this time. Mm -hmm. And then what was going on when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt? And so, to, just once again to break that down. So the Passover mm -hmm. was when the, when the children of Israel in Egypt wanted the death angel to pass over their firstborn. Mm -hmm. Right. And now we're into the Feast of, of um, Unleavened Bread, mm -hmm. which is when they were actually leaving Egypt leaving without Egypt. sin. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Right. It, was a, it was an unleavening. It was to get rid of all of the sinful things of the past. Mm -hmm. the, the pagan gods, little right. g, right. of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. we've been there for so long, 400 mm -hmm. years, and then under captivity under them 400, that we were indoctrinated much like we are 430. today. Mm -hmm. 430. 430. Thank right. you for mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So 430 years we were in, in that country. And we became indoctrinated. We started to take on their ways. And if they were giving off Easter eggs back then, you can best believe. We saw that as very well, We already read where they were doing what we were that doing. sort of thing. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. And yet no correlation to rabbits and eggs. Oh, goodness. Not one. Not one. <laughs> right. And crosses. Matter of fact, Easter is more about death than it is about birth and rebirth. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. right. I mean, even to this day, I mean, you, you look at Easter, it talks about, well, when you get the egg, what do you do with it? You eat it up yeah. and you destroy it. It's done. It's gone. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And look at all of the other ungodly things that you eat along with that egg. Mm -hmm. They have you with abominable things like ham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all of the other things. And then we have a family gathering around this. Right. You know, uh, we, we've spoken about this in shows before. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to symbol on holidays mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we always gave us holy days and commanded us to be as a one family, a holy convocation, mm -hmm. an assembling of the saints. Now, when you talk about the assembling of the saints, that's something interesting because what was actually uh, considered to be the Last Supper mm -hmm. was an assembling of the saints as they kept the Passover. Um, I want to read um, in St. Luke okay. chapter 22 and just pick up a couple of things because this is, this is once again, this is what you, you may actually read this in church but when you read it, they're going to take the the Hebrew out mm -hmm. and they're going to replace it with the paganism. Mm -hmm. Don't fall for it. OK, you got to understand these were Hebrew practices and these are the practices that you have to learn and you have to do. So let, let's go back and, and read this in context and put the Hebrew the culture back into what was going on at this time. Uh, we're going to read in St. Luke chapter 22. It says, now the feast of unleavened bread drew near. This is when the Messiah was going um, into the land just before his crucifixion. It says, um, uh, now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called the Passover. So you've got those two holy days mentioned right off the top. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill the Messiah, for they feared the people. They feared the people because the Messiah was giving them strength and making them feel good about themselves, mm -hmm. even though they were supposed to be a second class citizen, right. um, you know, just as you well, see today. He was, he was pointing out because these chief priests were getting over on it. They were rich. Well, yes. And they were and, really a the priest, the people. as it is today, yeah. wanted the people to be held down. Mm -hmm. The chief priests and the scribes wanted them um, to kill the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Then entered Satan into Judas surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the 12, the 12 um, apostles, and he went his way and consumed, I'm sorry, and communed mm -hmm. with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him, the Messiah, unto them. Um, jumping down to uh, verse 7, then came the day of unleavened bread, which was the Passover, when the Passover must be killed. Mm -hmm. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. So the Messiah was keeping the Passover. He was keeping that Le that that holy day mm -hmm. from Leviticus 23. He was not living 
haphazardly and just happened to be, you know, hey, I think I'll go hang out with the brothers. No, he was specifically keeping the things that were written about him and then upholding the the culture that was set out by the Most High, mm-hmm. keeping the, the um, holy days of Leviticus 23. I want to read one piece of scripture that, that go right ties ahead. that up. Mm-hmm. If they read in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Yeshua the Messiah said himself, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily, this is verse 18. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one joke or one tittle shall in no way pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And I don't think all is fulfilled just yet. There's some things that were written that haven't taken place. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wanted to read on. Um... And they said unto him, where will you uh, that we prepare? And he said unto them, behold, when you enter into the city, there shall be a man. I don't want to get into that part of the story, but um, it says in verse uh, 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down with the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover Mm -hmm. with you before I suffer. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of Elohim. And then he went on and did what many people like to call a communion, hmm. which isn't a communion. It was actually the keeping of the Passover mm-hmm. where he symbolically gave them the bread and symbolically gave them the the blood mm-hmm. and said, this is my body and this is my blood. Take eat. Mm-hmm. And what he was doing was was as you said being that sacrifice that sacrificial lamb mm-hmm. that was a, a big part of the Passover celebration it was a transition from right. the animal and the blood of animals it was never meant and it was said here in scripture the blood of the animals was never meant to cover the sins of man mm-hmm. so it was transition this was the time when Yahweh was transitioning the blood of an animal with the blood of a man mm-hmm. to cover the sins of a man. Mm-hmm. Blood for blood. An equal share of man's blood must be spilled if man's blood is shed. The blood of an animal can't cover that. Mm-hmm. That was a transition that was going on at that time. There was no communion. It was a transition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, so here we have the Messiah mm-hmm. who was a Hebrew, born a Hebrew, mm-hmm. who lived amongst Hebrews, who spoke Hebrew, kept the Hebrew culture, Lived a Hebrew, died a Hebrew. <laughs> died a Hebrew. Um, well, re- resurrected a Hebrew. <laughs> they buried him and said, "Here's the king of the Hebrews." Right. The, right. The Israel. Right. The, and, and then, somehow or other, they turned him into a Christian. And then they started instituting all these pagan practices. How could that be? <laughs> what book are they reading from? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I'm sorry. I shouldn't ask you something that you guys don't have an answer for. I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. It said so, if you don't read according to the words in this book, there's no light in it. Right. So once again, when when there was that that death that took place and you read about him being on the torture stake and him passing and giving up the ghost. So three days, not full, passed. And he rose again mm-hmm. and became, as you said, the first fruit, which is what yet again, another holy day that was mentioned in Leviticus 23. Mm-hmm. So once again, he fulfilled the things that were written about in Exodus. Mm-hmm. And then here we are in the New Testament and the same things are happening. Correct. All right. Well, we got to start wrapping this up. Hopefully people understand the the reason that this event took place and how it it, um, it, it you know uh, fortified what was happening in Exodus. So I guess the last thing that I want to talk a little bit about is the the future first fruits. I mean th- I mean the, the, mm-hmm. the Messiah wasn't his coming wasn't the end of the story. No. As a matter of fact, it's said that he came in as a lamb, mm-hmm. but the next time he comes in, he's going to come back the lion mm-hmm. of the tribe of Judah. Mm-hmm. And so what is that all about? I mean, is there some tie in to the holy days of, of future prophecy as well? Mm-hmm. 
Alpha? Absolutely, because that's when we start looking at, we have seven um, feast days throughout the, our year. Mm -hmm. um, we're dealing with, um, to this, this time frame is dealing with the spring feast days. And then, of course, we have 50 days later, um, the Feast of Pentecost, mm -hmm. when the Spirit was poured out upon um, the apostles such that um, they were given uh, the ability to speak in languages that um, other people heard in their own languages, although it was seeming to be one, one language. Right. So, unlike what people consider to be speaking in tongues, that's not what, um, you know, in, in the form of Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, so, that was, that's Pentecost. And then you go to the uh, fall time. Fall time, we have uh, three more, um, uh, not feast days, but we have three more uh, days that have to be observed, mm -hmm. uh, three more sets, I should say, one being the Feast of Trumpets, mm -hmm. the next mm -hmm. being Day of Atonement, mm -hmm. and the final being an eight-day um, feast, being the Feast of Booths or Tabernacles. Okay. Um, when you look at your first one, Feast of um, Trumpets, just like when you go back into Numbers and so forth, Numbers 10, it speaks on um, the the importance of the trumpets. So even when you look at Joshua um, and and the, the walls falling down and everything mm. else, the trumpets have always been important to our people. Yahweh gave us this as a form of collecting our peoples. There were certain ways in right. which the trumpets had to be blown. So, so the culture of the Hebrew Israelites mm -hmm are almost synonymous mm -hmm. with the culture of the of the of the most high mm -hmm. his holy days and then the, the deliverance and the, and the things that happened with his people back in the days of, of Egypt and also the things that are written of of the um, of the prophets are all tied in mm -hmm. To Yah's holy days. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So trumpets being, if we're talking future tense, trumpets being the gathering of the people, mm -hmm. um, day of atonement being that slaughter, being that Armageddon, being that time when the Messiah comes back as that lion mm -hmm. um, to to bring down this 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 evil corruption. Okay. Well, we've got one minute. Um, for the MEI, you look like you were looking for something. Well, you, something you know, I, you, uh, to say? you know, there's so much in here, and, and, and you know, my memory fails me at this time. Mm -hmm. But I, I know it was somewhere around Isaiah chapter 60 throughout, where um, that gives some future tense to these holy days still being kept even mm -hmm. in the millennium kingdom. Right. That every, that even the Gentiles were supposed to bring themselves to that high holy mountain that will be established mm -hmm. um, after, you know, the great tribulation. Um, and they have to, to come to that high holy mountain and, you know, Israel being the priest mm -hmm. had, to, had to be priest among them. Mm -hmm. But any nation that decided not to bring themselves mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. there was a judgment rendered against them. Mm -hmm. Okay, well the children of Israel are the key to the story. Yahshua was a child of the children of Israel and truly if you're going to understand Easter you've got to get back into your book and you've got to understand that it wasn't Easter that was being kept it was a feast of unleavened bread it was a feast of Passover it was a feast of the most high that were actually being celebrated at that time we're coming to you live from the cultural center of the new covenant congregation of Israel we're at 3901A Covington Highway in Decatur, Georgia phone number here is 404-286-5869 and we are um, at uh, the website is t h e n c c i dot com, and if you tune in, you can watch our service live Saturday, Saturday at one o'clock, and you can watch our uh, classes. Uh, we've got a, a wealth of information on that website, and we hope that you can come out sometime because, as you see, we are about trying to give you the information that you need to understand what's going on in your world. Uh, there's a lot of changes afoot. Uh, America is uh, rocking and rolling right now and it's not necessarily in a good way. And you have to understand that these things are about your future. Yourself.